window cleaning cradle but how does the window cleaning cradle get all the way up there and how does it help the window cleaners do you know how a window cleaning cradle works let's find out how does it work window cleaning cradle can you guess where i am that's right i'm on the roof of the building you must never go onto a roof of a building without a grown-up, but I've got special permission to be up here. This is where the window cleaning cradle is kept, and the window cleaner will stand in there when they're cleaning windows. And can you see the ropes? They're made of metal and hold the cradle safely in the air. We call them cables. The cables are attached to a crane. This is called a telescopic jib arm, and it's so strong it can lift 2,000 kilograms. That's about the same weight as a young white rhino. But the cradle, the cables and the telescopic jib arm all work together a bit like an arm. They can pick things up, put things down, and it can pivot, it can move from right to left. And the telescopic jib arm can also get shorter and longer. The telescopic jib arm uses something called hydraulics. When oil is poured into the hydraulics, it pushes a cylinder out, and this makes the arm longer. When that oil is let out again, it pulls the cylinder back in, making the arm shorter. And to move the window cleaning cradle from left to right so it can clean all the windows, it uses tracks. Can you think of something else that moves on tracks? That's right. A train! But to find out how the window cleaning cradle and the crane that moves along the tracks work together so that a window cleaner can reach all the windows, I think we need to take a closer look. Inside the crane is a winch, which is fixed to the window cleaning cradle by metal cables. The window cleaner presses a button, which makes the winch turn, winding the long metal cable onto it and lifting the window cleaning cradle off the ground. The crane turns and the window cleaner presses another button, so oil flows into the hydraulics. The telescopic jib arm moves out and the window cleaning cradle moves out with it. Another button unwinds the metal cable, lowering the window cleaning cradle, so the window cleaner can start to clean. When one line of windows is clean, the winch winds the cable up, lifting the window cleaning cradle back to the top. The crane moves along tracks, and the window cleaning cradle is lowered, and the next line of windows are cleaned. And this happens over and over until all the windows are sparkling clean. Wow, that was so interesting. I think we should see it for real using my special camera. And today, I'm using four special cameras. One on the telescopic jib arm, another looking at the tracks, one on the side, and one on my head, so you can see what I see. This is Bill. He's a window cleaning cradle operator, and he's given me special permission to go inside the cradle as he cleans the windows. And I'm wearing a special 
special harness and yellow jacket to keep me safe in the cradle loops. The telescopic jib arm is now pivoting, taking us over the edge of the building. <laughs> Look, can you see the hydraulic arm pushing the cradle out? Wow. We are so high up. And when we're in position, it's time to go down. Now the cradle's been lowered to the right position, Bill can clean the windows. Great job, Bill. This window is now nice and clean, but we've still got to clean the rest of the windows around the building. So we have to go back up to the top. And now the tracks can move us left and right. Can you hear that sound? That's the crane telling us that it's moving. Oh, here we go. Bye. <laughs> that was brilliant. I loved finding out how a window cleaning cradle works. What was your favourite part? Do you remember the name of the metal ropes that carry the window cleaning cradle? That's right, we call them cables. Did you hear the sound the crane made when it moved along the tracks? And did you see my four special cameras when they filmed Bill and I cleaning the windows? When it's really sunny, tall buildings like this one and all of those cast big dark shapes. They're called shadows, but you don't need to be as tall as a skyscraper to have a shadow. We make shadows too. You can make different shapes. But do you know how a shadow's made? Let's find out. How is it made? Shadow. Hello, Maddie. <laughs> have you ever made shadow puppets with your hands before? It's really fun, isn't it? Isn't that right, dog? Yes. And all you need is a lamp like this one and a flat blank wall. When I put my hand in front of the lamp, my hand blocks some of the light coming from it and it makes this patch of darkness on the wall. And this patch of darkness is my shadow. But what's happening to make my shadow? Light travels in a straight line. But when light can't pass through an object like my hand, it makes a shadow. We call things that you can't see through opaque. But what do you think will happen if we try this again with something you can see through, like bubbles? Can you see? My hand and the bubble wand are creating a shadow, but we can see through the bubble. We call this transparent. We can see the outline of the bubble as a shadow, can't we? That's because it's made of a thin layer of water and soap, which stops some of the light. But did you know shadows can change shape depending where the light and the object are? What do you think will happen if I move my hand closer to the wall and further away from the light? The shadow gets smaller. And that's because the further away an object is from the light, the less light it blocks out. So, what do you think will happen if I move my hand closer to the light? Do you think the shadow will get bigger or smaller? Let's see. That's right, it gets bigger. And that's because the closer the object is to the light, the more light it blocks out. Shadows can also change size and shape if the light moves. To show you, I'm going to need my assistant, da, 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 mini Maddie, and a torch. So, right now, the light is quite high above mini Maddie, and can you see, she's making a short shadow. That's because the light is only hitting the top part of her body, 
She's not blocking much of the light. But watch what happens if I move the light down. Whoop. Now her shadow is much longer. That's because more of her body is blocking the light, so she's making a longer shadow. Can you see? As I lower the light, the shadow gets longer. And as I bring it higher, it gets shorter. But I want to see what will happen if I try to make shadows with a much bigger light. Like the sun. We should never look directly at the sun because it can hurt our eyes, but we can look at the shadows that it makes. And look, here is my shadow right there. <laughs> and look, if I dance, my shadow dances too. <laughs> Listen to the sound my feet are making on the gravel. The light has travelled nearly a hundred million miles from space. That's a really, really long way. And on that long journey, nothing has got in the way of the light till it reached this garden, when I got in the way and have made this shadow. But our planet, planet Earth, is always moving. So our shadows change their size and shape. And to show you what this looks like, I'm going to use my special time-lapse camera. It lets me film things that take a really long time, but when we watch it back, it will look as if it's happening much quicker. I'm going to point the camera this way, so we can see how the shadows being cast by the house and the toys in the garden change throughout the day. It's recording. Look, there's the shadow the house is making. Can you see it moving? Wait, the shadow from the house has gone away. That's because clouds in the sky are stopping the light from the sun reaching the Earth. They're making really big shadows because they are closer to the sun. Only when the clouds move can the light from the sun reach the garden so the house can make more shadows. And look, on this time lapse, there aren't any clouds. You can see the shadows getting smaller. Rocks behind the camera are blocking the sunlight, which makes a shadow. But as the earth moves, more light hits the floor and not the rocks, so the shadows get shorter. Isn't that amazing? As the earth turns, time passes and the sun moves across the sky. And that's why shadows change size and shape. We loved finding out how shadows are made. What was your favourite bit? remember what we call things that light can't travel through. That's right, we say they are opaque. Did you hear the sound of my feet as my shadow and I danced on the gravel? And on my special time-lapse camera, did you see the shadow of the house move as the earth turned? So the next time you're out for a walk and you see your shadow, you'll know how it's made by blocking out the light from the sun. And the next time you see someone high up in a building cleaning windows, you'll know how the window cleaning cradle works to help them clean the window safely. Right, I'm off to clean some more windows. I'll see you next time. There are lots of things